Hello and welcome to another Cars.coza review. This is the brand new Range Rover. Not the Range Rover Sport or the Velar, just standard Range Rover. Everything you can get all in one car, Range Rover. So, without any more fluff, get ready to watch everything I can think of about a Range Rover in 15 to 20 minutes perhaps. Budget insurance. Affordable, because you can't afford not to. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. We'll start with what Range Rovers kind of differentiate themselves from every other luxury SUV, and that's their ability to go off-road in absolute comfort. This Range Rover now is 23 inch wheels. They are absolutely massive. But one thing Land Rover and Range Rover do better than anyone else is air suspension. So you kind of get the feeling that this entire air suspension system is working its hardest to make the 23 inch wheels seem comfortable. Obviously you don't need 23s, you can go slightly smaller if you want, and it'd probably be a better decision for the long longevity of the wheels and the car. But 23s look so damn good, especially when the air suspension drops down and you go into like full low mode gangster. It looks incredible hot. But yes, you do kind of get the feeling that the car's working extremely hard to make those 23 inch wheels feel comfortable. And here on washboard gravel, there's a little bit of vibration, but overall, like if you're down here in a bucky, even something like a Raptor, you're going to be bouncing about, the noise is going to be unacceptable. But in a Range Rover, everything is quiet and you've got a whole load of systems actually making sure it's extra quiet. So you've got little speakers in the headrests and up above you that are kind of playing white noise to kind of mitigate a lot of the intrusions that sound brings from outside the car. So kind of get the feeling that it's meant to be ultra luxurious and personalized to whichever seat you're sitting in. Back on tarmac now. Under the bonnet in this one, it's the 4.4 the liter V8. It's a BMW sourced engine, but that can only be a good thing, right? Uh, 390 kilowatts, 750 newton meters of torque. Very powerful and also very, very thirsty. We've had this for about a week now and we're averaging about 17 and a half liters per hundred in fairly mixed driving conditions. There is a good thing though, it sounds beautiful and sounds luxurious when you can hear it through all of the white noise and sound deadening bits. But uh, if you want a V8, you can actually get a hybrid V8 and that'll probably relieve some of those fuel costs. Who knows, you might even get under like 10 liters per 100 kilometers. But for now, uh, we're filling this up a lot. And thankfully the fuel price has come down somewhat from its July highs, but uh, still, I imagine when you're paying 3.6 million Rand for a luxury SUV, fuel might not be your biggest concern. That's right, 3.6 million Rand. Starting price for this. This has got a few options on it, but the options aren't that expensive. I think they're about 60,000 Rand on here. But uh, that makes very little difference to the overall price. And if you compare that to sort of competitors, Merc GLS is about a million Rand cheaper. BMW, I guess iX is the only thing kind of left on the market, which is X7 is not really on the market anymore. That's also about a million Rand cheaper. But again, Range Rovers go off road and do air suspension better than anything else you're ever going to drive. It's what they do. When you jump in here, it is particularly luxurious. You've got beautiful, like tight-knit leather here. Everything's soft touch. It's an experience when you get in here. It's kind of an event, I guess, when you get in here. It's a, every, every surface is thought out well. Although I have to say, like, if I'm gonna point out some less than 3.6 million rand surfaces, some of them are a little, some of the joins or some of the, the touch points can be a little bit 
less than that, so you're kind of like plasticky aluminium around the, the vents is a bit of a, a poor point, but some of the, the buttons as well don't feel quite as premium as you'd expect or event-like, but overall it is an extremely luxurious interior. It's still kind of a step up from your maybe GLS or the X7 that we used against. I really do like the interior in here. It's fancy and the digitization of the interior has improved as well. You've got a really clear instrument cluster display and the new PIVI Pro system here is all touch-based. It's the same one from the, uh, the iPACE and it updates over the air. We actually got sent an over the air update while we had the car in test. That kind of stuff is quite modern and fun. As for some of the touch buttons, everything in here is like a haptic touch button sensitive and if you're off-road that can sometimes get a little bit difficult to kind of touch and it would be nice you kind of as you touch it you kind of hold the top and then try and press everything with your thumb or try and rest your hands on it would be nice to have like a, a flatter surface to kind of rest your palm and touch the screen from but overall pretty happy with the system i gotta say it's a very clever system and there's a billion menus in here to play with and one of the ones we found to be quite cool is the air purification system which i got running here which tells you how dirty the air is outside and how clean it's making it inside so there's like a, a pm number which i think is like particle meters squared 2.5 anyway i don't know what it is but the number in front is telling me that the air inside is 14 dirty and inside it's zero clean and we actually drove behind a truck on the way here and that dirty number outside went to like 30 or 40 and by the time it got inside zero so you're actually getting healthier as you drive the range rover which is quite cool Beside that, your climate controls are all down the bottom here, and to save buttonry or pressing access buttons, your climate control and CTT buttons are all done through the same thing. So you push the climate control button to get your seat heaters on, or your seat coolers on, and then you push it again, and you can adjust your climate control. So kind of making one button do two tasks rather than making a fussy cabin. I've really got to note some of the practicality points in here. You've got like you've got a cooled center console here like a fridge not actually just air conditioned like an actual fridge is in here you've got cup holders here and then underneath you've got like a storage compartment underneath that for your contraband because no one is ever going to look underneath the cup holders for a secret hidey hole pocket so that's quite cool then at the front here you've got your wireless charger more cup holders more storage space and you've got usb-c points like everywhere and you can spec loads of them i think you can spec like up to 16 usb points if you want and on that note this is the first Range Rover that comes with seven seats exclusively in the long wheelbase. We've just got the standard wheelbase here. But if you get the long wheelbase, you can have seven seats. And that's the first for a Range Rover. Yeah, then finally about the steering wheel and its controls. You've got audio controls for adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, like auto basically drive, semi-autonomous driving. All here, kind of like part touch, part haptic, which is nice rather than just purely haptic where you accidentally press them the whole time. That's quite good. And then for those of you that uh, like the sun out of your eyes, you get a huge sun visor here. And then if I get underneath that, that goes there. You can have that. And you've still got a secondary sun visor here. Right. Uh, the back seat. There is a lot to do in here, especially if you're a back seat passenger. So firstly, you've got a whole lot of touch buttons here. You can turn on a little light here. You can turn on a laptop light here. You can move a blind up and down here. You can also move the main blind up. You've also got memory buttons here to memorize what seating position you have. Uh, one of the cool things you can do is get a screen here and then there's some HDMI ports which you can then connect your laptop to and then you can dual screen on your way to work. There is some stuff in here. I'm just gonna press this electric button and watch this come down here. It's a bit of a faff for what is essentially just cup holders. So slide that to open and now in order to get your cup holders you have to press a cup holder button. I'd like some cup holders please. Jeeves Cool. so that extends and then there is another button to give you cup holders and then in here you've got a holder for something and then you've got two more USB-C ports 
and then you fold this back up you can also change your climate from here if you want what else have we got here lighting the blinds i can change the blinds i can open the roof blind from here that's cool let's put that back for the camera guy Right. Oh, hopefully you're still with us. Another cool trick is there's little lights here around the seatbelt entrance clip buckle that lets you see it at night when it's dark. You've also got your own speaker system in each door. And down here you've got your climate control as well. So these two buttons for your climate control. Got two more USB ports and a 12 volt outlet in there as well. But it's not really any more comfort you need here. This is this is as fancy and as luxurious and event-like as I think you can get. Welcome to the final part of the Range Rover video and probably the main event if you're a Range Rover fan, the very back. Okay, I'm gonna open the boot here because as always in a Range Rover, you get a split folding tailgate, two parts. Now, because you've gone off-road in your Range Rover because you can, you get to a nice picnic spot, this is your place to sit. You jump up on here, space for two, and you've even got little drink holders in the side here now, so you can enjoy some non-alcoholic champagne, or your passenger can have alcoholic champagne. I don't know what you do. You now got something here, which is quite cool. So if you pull this lever, you get a place to store your horse and hound magazines or whatever you do. It's got straps here so that they don't fall about, which is nice. Pull that down, goes back up, and I believe it acts as a backrest as well, so you can you got somewhere to rest your back. Very nice. And then uh, I've got to try and get it back down. Down. Then on this side, you, uh, you have the air suspension buttons, which you can fiddle with. So we can go up. Oh, there we go. We're going up. You can hear the air suspension kind of. Can't go up anymore. My feet are... Oh, we can go up more. I'm actually going to get a nosebleed I go any higher here. Anyway. You can put the rear seats down from here. Your tow bar is ejected from here as well. And to make it the final part of the event while you're at your picnic, you have your speakers in the tailgate here. So you can play some romantic music and you can actually send the entire sound to the back here so that you hear it here best. Very event-like. Now, I'm quite far off the ground, so I'm gonna have to go back down so my feet can reach the ground. This is the laziest way to exit a Range Rover. Okay, we're in gangster low mode. Right. And that is the rear. Obviously, it's huge in there. I have a cooler box here, but like 30. 30 cooler boxes, maybe a bit much, but around that. With all the seats down, 450 cooler boxes. You can quote me on that. Okay, I uh, need to perform a bit of a U-turn, but uh, one of the things that is new on this Range Rover is the four-wheel steering system. So the rear wheels will turn at lower speeds to make sure it feels like a smaller car and you can get it U-turned in a much smaller area. So I'm gonna swing it around here. This really does U-turn like almost in its own length. It's really good, this rear wheel steering. And on that note, we're gonna take it through some corners here. Uh, Interestingly, it has a chassis leveling system that kind of keeps the car level as you try and hound it through some corners. If you want to do that, actually, you kind of, you've got this mixed ride setup here. So you've obviously got the comfort that you need for rear passengers or front passengers, but then you also need like a level of driving dynamism for the driver. So it feels confident to kind of push on or, or drive with people in the back of the car with you. I gotta say, it does have quite good brakes for something that's, that's as big as it is. So, kind of jump on the brakes, but it doesn't dive forward like older Range Rovers. It's kind of starts to level out, and then you can hustle it through the corner a little bit with the V8. It feels, it feels quite good. I mean, the steering weights up seemingly as you add lock, but it feels, it feels consistent, easy to drive. I'd say, I feel like I'm driving such a massive arc around it. It's relatively dynamic. 
maybe don't buy it if you're looking for the most exhilarating driving experience, but I doubt that's what a Range Rover is really about. It's kind of more about comfort. Cool, so that pretty much wraps up everything I can think of about a Range Rover right now. Obviously, there is tons of stuff to talk about with this car, but that's just what we've covered for now. And if you're looking to sell your car and perhaps upgrade to a Range Rover, you can do that on our website. Why not go to cars.coza and then click the sell car button and it's free. And you basically list it with all the dealers we have on our site, which is basically the whole country. And they will then bid for your car. And if you don't want to sell it to them, don't sell it to them. But if you want to, you'll probably get the best deal rather than selling it any other way. Give it a try. Cool. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video where hopefully Chiro is back. Cars.coza is so much more than just a YouTube channel. You've got to check out our app. It's been downloaded over 1 million times in the South African Android store alone. The links are in the description below and I promise you it is the easiest way to find your next car. Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. Cars.coza. 